Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Ray. And as I've told you last week, the reason I haven't been uploading lately is because I'm moving apartment on top of doing my uni and work. So yeah, here it is. Welcome to my new kitchen and new apartment. This kitchen is a bit smaller than the previous one, but it's got all the good functionalities that the other kitchen has. So I'm not complaining. Anyways, today's video is gonna be about mac and cheese. But I'm not gonna show you the usual mac and cheese. Instead, I'm gonna show you my special way of pimping up my mac and cheese. Let's treat. So here are all the ingredients that you will need. First, we're gonna start with some roux, which is a mixture of butter and flour. Then followed by thickened cream. And I have some spices here, I'm using nutmeg and smoked paprika as well as black pepper today. So for the cheeses, I'm gonna use a combination of three cheeses. First, aged cheddar, because it's strong and creamy, it will build the basic flavor of the mac and cheese. And next, for texture, I have provolone, which is an aged stringy cheese. And just to add the depth and enrich the flavors, I'm gonna use some manchego, which is made from sheep's milk. Now for topping, I have some salami here. I'm using spicy salami that I have sliced thinly, and also a bunch of sage. These two we're gonna fry up later to make them crispy. This is completely optional, but if you have some truffle oil, that will be a great addition to the mac and cheese. Now we're just gonna start by grating all three cheeses that we have. These are roughly 300 grams altogether. So I would suggest to go from the order of firmness, which is manchego, provolone, then the cheddar because cheddar is really messy to grate simply because it's softer and creamier. Now on your stove, you should prepare two pans, one bigger one with water and smaller one with just a little bit of oil and both over medium high heat. Then when the oil is hot enough, you can start off by frying the salamis And when they have crispened up, you can just set it aside on a piece of kitchen paper to absorb the excess oil. If you can't fit everything in one layer, you should do it in batches like what I'm doing here. And next, we're gonna try to crispen up the sage leaves. This will only take about 5 seconds in the hot oil. Just let them fry like that and set it aside straight away. Now moving back to the pan with water, it should already start with boiling, so now back to the usual drill for making pasta, boiling water, olive oil and a big pinch of salt, then you can add in your macaroni. And when the pasta is boiling, that's a good time to start making your sauce. So either you clean the previous pan or just use a new pan altogether. All you have to do is just to melt some butter over medium heat, then add in 1 tablespoon of plain flour. Then just fry off the plain flour for about 30 seconds just to take the raw edge off from the flour. After that, you can add in 300 ml of cream and give it a good mix. Then when it's already mixed up thoroughly, you can add in the spices, just half teaspoon of nutmeg and half teaspoon of smoked paprika. Then followed by 2 pinches of salt and a pinch of black pepper. Then at this stage, you can just lower the heat down to medium-low heat and start adding in the cheese. I would suggest adding it half by half just to make sure of perfect incorporation and no clumps. So at this stage, you're pretty much done with your cheese sauce. Just move back on to the pasta, which at this stage should be perfectly al dente already. And just before you strain the pasta, make sure you turn off the heat on the cheese sauce first. You don't want it to be burning and drain the pasta and then you can just pour in the cheese sauce straight away then what you have to do is just to give it a good stir make sure all the pasta is covered with the cheese sauce just remember the heat is off at this point when you're happy with the pasta you can add in the topping the crispy salami and crispy sage i would recommend just to add in half of them and then just put the other half as the topping later when you're serving it Last but not least, don't forget to add in a good result of the truffle oil just to give it a hint of that amazing truffly goodness. 
just give it one good last mix and that's ready to serve. All you have to do is just to scoop it into a bowl or a pasta bowl, then top it with the crispy sage and salami, and we're good to go. And there you have it guys, one of my favorite ways of enjoying my mac and cheese. I hope you find that recipe interesting, and if you did, please leave this video a like. And don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get the latest updates on my videos. And don't forget to check out my previous videos right over here. And if you have any requests on what you wanna see me cook next week, you can leave the comment below. And all the links and measurements is gonna be in the description box below. So I really hope you give this a try, because I think it's amazing. And that is all for today. See you next week guys, bye!